Hey everyone and welcome to Chet Chat. These days my favorite show on Netflix is Grey's Anatomy and I'm sure those of you who track that show know the power and excitement and passion that Dr. Christina Yang has with her department of cardiology. So we have today with us Dr. Tilak Suvarna in Asian Heart Hospital, a senior interventional cardiologist and he's here to tell you everything you want to know about how to become a cardiologist and the life of a cardiologist. But before we invite him to the show, I must remind you that we've interviewed some fantastic doctors and surgeons in the past as well, and you want to go into our medical playlist and take a look at some of those wonderful interviews. And quickly press that subscribe button and the bell notification button right next to it and like us and follow us at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Chet Chat 101. And let's invite Dr. Suvarna to join us on the show. Dr. Suvarna, it's a pleasure to have you on Chet Chat today. <laughs> And tell us, we've got students who've been asking for this particular show, they want to become cardiologists. So the first question I want to ask from you is what does it take, what qualities does it take from the student in order to succeed and become a good cardiologist? So I think first and foremost is not just cardiology but your medicine, that you need to be passionate about these subjects for medicine, for cardiology, for healing people. So that passion has to be there. If right. you don't have that passion, then it doesn't make sense to mm. pursue medicine or for that matter cardiology. The second, I think, prerequisite is you should be ready to put in a lot of hard work. Mm. Medicine involves a lot of hard work, long hours, long years, your career goes on for a long time. So you should be ready to work very hard. And third thing is to have empathy, mm. empathy for right. patients. So it's very important to have that. Don't look as, at medicine as a profession to make money. You do good work, money will come to you. And so, for passion, hard work, and good values and ethics, I think they are the three prerequisites that you must have or you must develop in order to succeed in medicine and in cardiology. I think these were absolutely wonderful, pivotal three cornerstones mm. that you've highlighted to them. Mm. But let's say they have this mm. and they're very keen to, to get into the field, they've enrolled themselves and got admission into an MBBS uh, college. Mm. Now they need to choose between specialties, they're not very sure which way to go. So, so would you be able to guide them as yeah. to if they're looking at cardiology, what are the things they should keep in mind uh, before they enter this field? Correct. I think you should be in love with the heart and that's not <laughs> difficult. You know? Cardiology is the most tempting branch of all the branches to pursue. <clears throat> it's a very dynamic uh, branch and to work on the heart when it is beating is, is uh, something which is uh, very exciting. Mm. <clears throat> so not just dynamic, also in cardiology because you're dealing with life-threatening instances, you get an opportunity to save lives and to change the clinical outcome. So if that excites you, then I think it's a it's a wonderful branch to have. So among all the branches, usually uh, one chooses cardiology because it's it's exciting, it's dynamic, glamorous to some extent. Mm, yes. So, yes. but again, as I said in the beginning, it requires a lot of hard work. So you should be ready to put in that kind of a hard work. So possibly most one of the most coveted branches to get mm. into and mm. therefore in the pecking order they probably need to perform really mm. well yes, yes. in the think, entrance. Yeah. Uh, That's right because the toppers probably take up the college seat first. So you have to study well and get good marks <laughs> in the entrance test. And let's look at the other experience. Let's say we, we have taken on board the fact that it's, it's the most coveted branch. They need to work very hard and they need to be very passionate about it. But what other experience you think they should acquire during this period so that when they are in that position, they score over some of the other students? Correct. So besides putting in the hard work to study, maybe a good uh, thing to do a stint in ICU. So when the students are preparing for the entrance test, you know, so they get time, that's the time probably to work in an ICU would be very helpful because when you become a cardiologist and you practice, especially in the smaller towns or you open up your own hospital, it's not going to be just cardiology patients that you're going to see. You're mm. going to see a lot of uh, patients with uh, acute illnesses which right. may not necessarily be cardiac and you can't refuse treating them. 
So a stint in the ICU would be very useful. After that, once you get into cardiology, then you won't get time to, to come back, to come back okay. and then do the ICU training. Excellent. Let's also talk about the career path. Mm -hmm. You did an MD in internal medicine right. and then went on to do your DNB okay. in cardiology. Right. So what could be, so this is one great route for them to yeah. follow. But what could be alternate routes for them to follow in terms of, could they do an MD in general medicine? Could they do it in pediatrics maybe? Yeah. Or what could be alternate routes for them? Correct. So after MBBS, you typically do MD in internal medicine or in pediatrics, both of which are uh, know, qualifiers for pursuing a DM or DNB degree in cardiology. And then you again give an entrance test, either the common entrance test, which is at, which is the need, or some of the colleges uh, have their own entrance test. Right. So you appear through them and then either do a DM or a DNB in cardiology. So this, this is the only way. I think IGNU had uh, some courses which allowed students after MBBS to pursue a degree, uh, a diploma in, in cardiology, in non-invasive cardiology. It has been discontinued now, but it probably would come out back again in another form. Mm -hmm. So that gives an opportunity for students after MBBS to pursue a career in cardiology. Straight away, so as against... Okay. The aim of this IGNU is to train cardiologists who would then go to smaller towns mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then give the benefit of cardiology practice to people staying in the smaller town. Okay, wonderful. So that's an option we can look out yes. for whenever it comes yes, back. Come back again, yes. Talking about specialties within cardiology, mm -hmm. you're uh, into interventional cardiology, but could you take them through some of the other specialties Correct. within this broad Yeah, team? so the advantage of cardiology is again, it's, it's a very vast subject. Interventional cardiology is mainly coronary interventions so when you take, treat heart attacks or do angiographies and angioplasties. But besides that, you can take up a career in structural heart disease, mm -hmm. which is managing just the valves. Okay. So valves which are stenosed or which are leaking, you replace the valve without surgery. Then congenital heart disease. So young children with heart defects, they can be managed uh, with, with interventions. Then there is electrophysiology. So where the, there are disturbances in the heart rhythm, so these di disturbances in the, or arrhythmias can be set right by procedures called electrophysiology or radio frequency ablation. So that also is very exciting. Besides, of course, the basic cardiology that one could do, that is treat hypertension patients, mm -hmm. treat patients with chronic stable angina or treat patients with uh, heart failure. So there, you know, we don't have to be an interventionalist. After doing cardiology, you don't have to be an interventionalist necessary. You can still uh, do non-invasive practice, which is doing this, treating uh, hypertension and heart failure patients, as well as uh, doing non-invasive cardiology, which mm -hmm. is doing, say, a 2D echocardiography or doing nuclear medicine, you know, the nuclear medicine, right, which is right. also a branch in which you diagnose whether this patient requires any intervention or not. So there are vast mm. sub-specialties in cardiology which one can uh, take up. Pursue, yeah. Thank you so much. Those was, that was really illustrative for them to you know look at and examine what they would be interested in. Yeah. But talking about the life of a cardiologist, typically what would a day in your life look like? Uh, yeah. Typically the day starts very early. So one gets up and then when one a cardiologist sees his patients having so many blocks, so you do tend to be concerned about your own health and uh, knowing that exercise plays an important role in preventing heart disease, most of us would uh, in, inculcate some kind of an exercise into your daily lifestyle and early morning is the only time that you get. Right. So typically I think a cardiologist starts his day with, with an exercise regimen which could be going to the gym and working out or maybe just taking a walk or some of us <clears throat> probably also uh, do yoga yeah. in a city like Bombay or Delhi. A lot of your time goes in traveling. <laughs> so a couple of hours going and coming back from the hospital. Some doctor, some colleges visit different hospitals. So a lot of time is spent in traveling. Useful to have a driver at that time because sure. that's the only time when you get time to read, read up. So sit in the car and read or maybe catch a few wings. So sure. That would sure. interest you. Then once you're in the hospital, then you know you, there are three things that one a cardiologist does. One is intervention, so he goes typically to the cath lab and does angiographies or angioplasties. <clears throat> the second aspect is to see patients admitted in the wards. So you take your ward rounds or ICU rounds. And third thing is you consult patients in the in, in your outdoor, so mm. in the OPD. Yeah. And then you have to, as a cardiologist, you'll be prepared for emergencies which can come anytime. So we, when you're doing your OPDs, you get a call for uh, an emergency angioplasty for somebody who's having a heart attack. So you have to rush to the cath lab and do that. Or these calls could come even in the night. So, mm. so the day typically ends for most of us 
So what would you sort of tell them in terms of both sides of the spectrum? Right. So I think about the pros, as I said earlier, it can be very fulfilling to be a cardiologist because as I said, you are going to make a difference in people's life. So either you know, saving their lives or you know, improving their, the quality of their life. I think that is something which is very fulfilling. So that's the biggest pro for me. And unlike other branches, as I said, the, the, uh, the benefits or the changes that you make that result by your intervention, uh, they are very apparent. They are yes. very apparent and they are very quick. So, so that's why it's very fulfilling. Uh, but at the same time, it's very important to <clears throat> to be balanced because it, sometimes it gives you a false sense of power. You start believing that you're God. I think just because there is a patient who's got a block and just because you have an instrument in your hands with which you can open a block doesn't mean that you go and start opening every block. You have to first see whether what you're going to do is going to help the patient or not. That's very important. Not everybody who has got blocks need to undergo an intervention. So you should first see whether the patient has a problem and whether you'll be able to solve that problem. So that's where the values, the ethics is come into play. Mm-hmm. The cons is that because as I said, it's a very demanding profession. So your family time does suffer. So you study a lot. So you tend to get married during your residency days. Then you get children, so you, and when you, the children are very young, you are beginning to mm. uh, develop your practice. So you, there is not much time that one gets with children. Then also, since you are dealing with the heart, there are a lot of expectations from patients. So that can also lead to mm. a lot of stress. So you should be able to handle the stress, and that stress can also affect your heart. Mm, interesting. Also, what happens is the postgraduate admission in India is very hard to get and the seats are very limited. So I find increasingly a lot of students want to go abroad to pursue a career in medicine. Mm. So what would be your sort of opinion on a study in India versus studying abroad okay. for someone who wants to be a cardiologist or a successful medical practitioner and wants to come back and work in India perhaps? So if you want to pursue a career in medicine, in medicine in India, then I think you should need, you need to study in India. It doesn't make sense to go abroad, study and come back. You could go out for a couple of years, wherein you can refine your uh, area of interest. Because of, because of the volume of work, which is there outside in interventional cardiology, you could expose yourself to that those newer trends. And then of course you could come back and it. But then that would be for a, a few short years. time, short time, maybe a couple of years. It not only improves your uh, specialization but also is uh, labeled to you and that will help mm. in your practice mm. no question about that but if you are going to practice in India I think you have need to pursue medicine in India other reason is that uh, doing medicine abroad is very costly on the other hand if you have decided that you want to go abroad then pursuing medicine as a way to go abroad is probably is a good idea you can do <laughs> continue medicine there doctors in uh, doctors abroad do very well right right so what you're saying basically is it's, it depends on your goal, yeah, where do you want goal, to be yes. and you need to make that choice very Correct. early Correct. and then follow the path that yes, takes yes. you there. Saying that you'll do your medicine abroad and then come back to India is only going to frustrate you. Hmm. you know, when you come back here, then you find that things are not the same. So that can lead to some frustration, which I've seen in so many people, they have, right. come, they have then gone back. And my last question to you stems from your talk about you know how we need to balance our lives and how we spend so much of our time in our careers that we don't have time for ourselves or our family. So what, for instance, you know, do, do you do for taking away time from all of this and for right. yourself? So we always advise, we advise the patients also to balance their life uh, in such a way that you develop hobbies, you de-stress. Uh, again, easier said than done. We ourselves are not able to do that many times. But I think it's very important to develop uh, some hobby 
because at some point of time in your career you're going to ebb off you know you're going to reduce your practice because it's so demanding also it can affect your health so at that time you should have some hobbies otherwise it can be uh, very frustrating and depressing sometimes so hobbies may uh, music is a very good hobby that one can pursue playing the guitar and those things or uh, some sports some kind of sports mm. you know maybe mm. some outdoor sports or some even some indoor sports can be can be very relaxing running a lot of my yes. colleagues do running they do trekking mm. so two three times in a year they go trekking they go trekking so that also is very very good running a marathon for instance you know it requires a lot of uh, practice so that can take away time de stress you give you some your own time we thank you so much dr suvarna for taking our time and for guiding our students and thank you for being with us thank you Hey thank you so much for watching right till the end and I'm sure you thoroughly enjoyed that episode and if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer for you put everything down in the comment section right under this video and press that subscribe button the bell notification button and like us and follow us at Facebook Twitter and Instagram at chatchat101 and happy watching